Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about noble gases. Um, we're going to have a look at where they're found in the periodic table. We're going to have a look at um, some of their properties and we're going to have a look at some of their uses. So first of all, here are where the noble gases are found in the periodic table. They are found in this group here, right on the right hand side, called group zero. Now the reason why it's not called group eight is that group eight would imply that they all had eight electrons in the outer shell. Whereas helium, because it only has two electrons, it has a full outer shell. So all it's saying is all of these have a full outer shell. Now, all of these uh, noble gases having a full outer shell gives them certain properties that we're going to have a look at in a second. So we're just going to have a look at neon as an example. So here is neon. As you can see, when I finish drawing it, neon has a full outer shell. This makes it extremely unreactive. Now the scientific term for unreactive is inert. So it really doesn't undergo many reactions at all. All noble gases are mono, uh, monoatomic. Now this means they just go around as one atom all by itself. They are all gases and um, they all go around as single atoms because the fact they have full outer shells, they're extremely unreactive. Obviously, as a result of being so unreactive, they're really non-flammable. They're extremely unreactive. Um, due to the fact that they are so inert, so unreactive, they've actually got some good uses. So number one is in filament lamps. So what we actually have in a filament lamp is a particular filament and it gets so hot, it gets so hot that it emits light. Now, in order to stop this really, really hot filament right here, this really, really hot filament from reacting with the oxygen, we've actually got argon within these filament lamps because it's unreactive to stop the hot filament from reacting with the oxygen in the air. In a very, very similar way, it works in flash photography. In flash photography, when you've got um, when you've got something which suddenly has a, a big flash, again, you want something really, really inert in order to stop it from reacting with the oxygen in the air. So also in flash photography, you could have um, you can actually have argon. Uh, krypton or xenon in order to stop these reactions from happening. Thirdly is in welding. Again, a really, really similar principle. Due to the fact that it's inert, you could actually uh, use it in welding to make sure that um, to make sure that it doesn't react with the hot metal. So this person here is welding. So we can make sure that that we could, if we have um, a noble gas in the environment here, it makes sure that the, uh, the heat from the hot metal does not react with the oxygen in the air. Now the final one, it could be used for um, airships and party balloons. Now the reason why that is, is because they have a lower density than air. So here's my party balloon. Now it's going to float because it has a lower density than air. Okay, now the only other thing we need to know about the noble gases is the trend as we go down the group. Because the trend in all of these following things have a pattern. So the boiling point, the melting point, and the density all increase as you go down the group. So they're lower at the top and they're higher at the bottom. Now the type of question that you might be asked about this is let's say we got given the density of helium as being 0 0.2 kilograms per meter squared and argon as 1.8 kilograms per meter, oh, sorry, per meter cubed. Sorry, my mistake, it's volume. So a question might be, Given that this 
is the density for helium, and this is the density for argon. Can you predict what the density for neon could be? So all you'd need to do is find the average of those two to find halfway in between them. And that would give you 1.0 kilograms per meter cubed. So it's essentially just following the pattern to, um, to find the missing density. So to summarise, noble gases, they are all found in group zero of the periodic table. They all have a full outer shell. Because of their full outer shell, it means that they're extremely unreactive. They, as a result, they go round by themselves. Due to them being inert, they could be used for filament lamps, flash photography and welding to stop reactions happening with oxygen in the air. Due to their low density, they're used for airships and party balloons. As you go down group zero, the boiling point, the melting point and the density all increase from top to bottom. And that's basically noble gases. Thank you.